Did you know that you can use the same techniques in a search engine? Instead of using and or not, you just use a plus symbol, you enter or, or a minus symbol. Before we dive into using our search strategies in a Google or other search engine, I need to warn you something. While these skills can be applied, sometimes your instructors give really strict boundaries for what you can and cannot use. If your instructor says, no, you may not use Google to go out and find your resources, follow what they say. They're grading you. So what I'm going to do is search and I'm interested in the anti-vaxxer culture in the United States. And so I want to explore, first of all, who are these people? So I'm going to start out by typing in anti-vaccination. Oops. And instead of the and, I'm going to do plus. I'm going to put United States in quotation marks and then another plus demographics. Let's see what comes up. All right. So first off, it's going to offer me scholarly articles and I'll explain why it's doing that in a minute. Then I have geographic and demographic correlates of autism related something or rather to vaccines. Um, so there's the sociodemographic information, fast, fast statistics from the CDC. Using those Boolean and other search operators are going to be really useful just in doing a Google search. Online services like Google and Instagram use programming algorithms to determine what information to deliver to you. It's called a filter. Eli Pearser refers to this idea as automated personalization. While it may be helpful in some ways, it can also isolate you from other information. Sometimes referred to as an echo chamber, the filter bubbles created by your online activity can limit your exposure to different points of views and weakens your ability to avoid fake news and bias. That's why I highlighted that these scholarly articles are coming up first is because I have a history of going to Google Scholar and looking for scholarly content. So it knows my behavioral patterns and has created this filter bubble for me in the results list. Same thing goes for why I'm getting all these .gov websites is because when I usually do my searches, I add another tool. So I would add, oops, site, colon, dot gov. And what that does is it's telling the search engine to only pull up websites. That's domain name ends with dot gov. You can do dot edu, dot mil, dot com, they're going to all give you different types of information and we'll create a tutorial to help you assess and evaluate that later on. But just for right now, if I do a search with .gov, you can see, okay, so I'm getting scholarly articles at the top and .gov are the only results that are going to show up now. Now, I did a search in another search engine called DuckDuckGo removes filter bubbles from your search results. So I'm getting a whole different set of information and it should cut out that sort of echo chamber of information. So you can use other tools, other search engines to kind of help eliminate that type of information limitation. 